got threats, but I also got the other side. I have to be open here. I'm, I'm, I have nothing if I'm not straight and open with people. I also got a, an invitation to go and meet them and talk right. to them to try mm -hmm. and understand their position, which I did. I did go. And I had a meeting with uh, a number of people from the National Front just to hear their point of view, you know, and talk to them, explain yeah. my point of view. Um, Walk us through that then. I mean, where, where did that happen? And were you on your own or, you know, did, did Chelsea provide you with a minder or anything like that? Was Chelsea was doing it. No, can't do that. No, I just, I met them at a cafe near Stamford Bridge down by the tube station. And uh, I thought, right, okay, I'll meet them, just talk to them. I'm doing it in daytime, a wee bit safer then. But they actually were perfectly reasonable. They, no, they weren't reasonable. They were perfectly nice about right. it and chatted and talked and explained why. And we had two things we agreed on in the end, which was interesting. We both liked ska and we both liked reggae. Oh, no, <laughs> we didn't agree on a thing. <laughs> <laughs> but what I did understand was I understood their argument a bit better, which, to be fair, I hadn't really heard before. And, you know, what I felt that made was my argument stronger after that because I knew where they were coming from. Mm -hmm. So when you argue from ignorance, it's not a good thing. So I try to, you know, be it left, right, be it, you know, whatever attitudes, I'll go and listen to people. You know, I don't, I'm not big on cancelling. I'm about, I'm quite the reverse. I hate this concept of cancelling. Yeah. So I'm about, you can speak. We're, we're an open society. I'll listen to you. I won't agree with you. But then I will debate with you. And if I've got a better debate, hopefully we'll win the day. Um, mm -hmm. and that's, so that's what I did with them. So they, they were in no way threatened when I went there. But then I knew that I was a player for their team and I was white. So I, I probably wasn't under any yeah. in, in any danger. Um, but I was kind of happy to do that, you know, at the time. But Pat, Pat here's a, a question because obviously you've gone down there with your ethics and your principles and the way that you've been brought up by your family. When you went into that club, you must have been aware from minute one that there's a little bit of a toxic environment around here. And I'm a, I can only imagine that a guy of your principles would, would find that uncomfortable, really uncomfortable, right from the start. I mean, did, no, did, that, that's did, a before you go any further. That wasn't the case then. Absolutely not the case then. No. Part of it, I knew you saw all about English football, really, because I was only interested in Scottish football at the time. But it wasn't that big a deal then. That the, Chelsea were second division. They were yeah. lower division. They were nothing at that time. And remember, that was just grown at that time. But as soon as I was aware of it, that was me, I'm speaking out. Yeah. What was the good thing? And this is the change. This is the, the change. I was fuming about it, and I explained that to the club that it wasn't acceptable. It was, I, I don't know how long, and I'm guessing here, I would say six more months, and it's in the club programme. We do not accept it here. The club are making statements about it. The union are making statements about it. We're getting behind the good fight. Um, and maybe it takes somebody from the outside to come in and say, right, do this. This is what we do. Mm -hmm. And then we started doing it. Um, but at that time, I, my argument is, you know, has always been, people blame the clubs. It's almost always not the clubs. Yeah. It's a group of people that are following the clubs that the clubs do not want. Then they, they haven't wanted them. Mm -hmm. Can you remember any club that said, are we like all them fascists following us? Are we like all them hooligans following us? They don't. They absolutely yeah. don't want it. The important thing, the imperative, is that the clubs are brave enough in time, hopefully very quickly, to stand up and say, not an earning. And mm -hmm. when any club's like that, I'm fine with it. I'm absolutely mm -hmm. fine with that. So I don't have any dislike or hatred. And if you look at Chelsea, I mean, I'm sure there's still a number of right wing people that follow, follow Chelsea and have views that I would just you know, absolutely completely despise. But just go and look at the, the programs that they run, the anti-Semitism programs that they run, the anti-racism stuff, the, you know, they, 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 they're, they're like all the other top clubs. They mm -hmm. see and try and do the right things. And there was a recent, a while back there was something hit, there was uh, somebody shouted something really vile that one of the players taking a, a, a corner kick down at the uh, Matthew Harding end. So about two or three years ago. Um, they went, I, I phoned them, I'd heard about it. They immediately were gangbusters on trying to find out who this person was to ban them for life. Mm -hmm. what? People think, oh, they're kind of tacitly agreeing with it. No, they aren't. Yeah. They're no, they, they, made, they made a really big deal, wasn't it, in Paris in the underground when um, a group of Chelsea fans were abusing a, a black guy there. 
and I, I remember the club went out of their way to bring the guy to London to give him the VIP. And I, I think that's all about sending out a message, isn't it? Really, to, it's partially a message. Yeah. But it's also the message is clubs like Chelsea. This is what we need to know, and it's a wee bit can be a bit annoying as well. They don't want that sort of message. When in actual fact, what's the market those teams are looking at just now? Mm. It's India. It's China. It's Nigeria. It's the States, it's all over the world. That's their market they're looking at now, right? If you start getting the business side of it now. They don't want their club to be associated with that. Yeah. That's unbelievably unthinkable. And I get it now and again. Twitter, I go, how can you follow a club that XXX? I'm thinking, well, they're not like that, the club. You've got a couple of nut- a bunch of nutters that will try and attach themselves to it. But as long as the clubs themselves are brave enough, strong enough to say, no, that's not us, not in our name, then it's absolutely fine. You can have 50% of your people following you being people who I would dis- disavow. But if the club is saying the right things, then it's okay because we're trying to get rid of it. 